How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Christmas month. All right. I'm even more excited than I was in the first review. Because I'm reviewing what I believe to be the best Tim Allen Santa Claus movie ever. I'm going to review the Santa Claus 2. Okay. I can't contain myself. Let's, let's get right into it. It opens with three pilots flying through the North Pole that they literally have no reason to be in the movie. And they almost discover the North Pole. But let's be honest, this joke was playing in my mind during the entire scene that they're in. Huh. It sounds like Ingo Bell Rock. Why does it sound like a Balto character is involved? I don't care if it's forced. I am proud of that joke. In this movie, we're introduced to this character, Curtis, which I'll get into in the character section. But it turns out there's this other clause, meaning, like in the first movie, the first Santa Claus is when he put on the suit, he became Santa Claus. Well, in this movie, there's another one of those clauses. He has to get married, but let's be honest. This is what he was thinking when he heard that news. Matrimony? I gotta get married? I barely survived my first marriage. And let's be, let's all be honest. I, I Bernard is kind of an asshole, cause, uh, he's supposed to be the one that's on top of everything besides Santa. He was the head elf in the first one, and and Curtis is the new number two elf. And honestly, because it's Spencer Breslin, you gotta throw hate at him, so I think it's worthy of this joke. I mean, I overlooked the clause too, but Spencer Breslin's in this movie. Blame him. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of an asshole. Yeah, don't throw Curtis under the bus because you also overlooked it. Finally, Charlie ends up on the naughty list because he's been acting out. And although I love the joke that they tell in the movie where he's like, Charlie Sheen? I thought he got clean. Yeah, Tim Allen. Uh, I'll leave him alone on that because I love Tim Allen. Scott has until Christmas to find a Mrs. Claus. Otherwise, he can't be Santa anymore. Then when he goes home, he ends up falling for the, the principal of Charlie's school. And that causes friction between them. And whereas family dilemmas in most Christmas movies are, are over dramatic and just not really fleshed out. This one I actually believe is fully fleshed out. Because Charlie has a reason for acting out. Obviously, that doesn't make what he's doing right. But at the same time, you gotta feel for him. I mean, he can't tell anyone that his dad's Santa Claus. And he's so proud of his dad. But at the same time, he's disappointed in his dad. Because he feels like the knowledge of him, his dad being Santa Claus is a, is a burden. And all that is going on. While a toy version of Santa is running the North Pole... And he ruins everything. He says, All these children don't don't deserve toys. Give him them coal. Because apparently, people not being perfect makes them absolute assholes. Look at the two elves that you're working with. And they're the good guys. Cut these kids some freaking slack. You're an asshole. Of course, toward the end, Charlie actually helps Carol, the principal. He helps Carol finally accept that Santa Claus exists after Scott tries to tell her the truth and she's just like, stop making fun of me. And I absolutely love how he uses the globe that Bernard gave him in the first one the same way that he revealed to Scott that Santa is real and that he's Santa and the special effects in this movie are amazing and that's easily my favorite scene in the movie this is your mind on drugs 
You believe in Santa Claus. Also, you want to give me an A on every assignment. Oh, shut up! Stop ruining an amazing scene. The toy Santa is stopped, Christmas is saved, and Scott gets married, and all the while, Charlie and his dad finally make amends. The lesson he teaches Lucy is such a heartwarming message. Just, just, like, knowing it's not a burden, it's a gift. Now, even if he does, even if he ends up feeling like it's a burden again, because Lucy also knows, he has someone to talk to about it. But because it's not a burden to him anymore, he has someone to share that gift with. And that's amazing. And that's the perfect way to end the movie. So overall, the story is the best of the trilogy. With Charlie, yeah, I'm including Charlie in this section, even though he was on the first one, because his character has changed because he's grown up. He's very rebellious. It's basically rebelling against his principal, saying that she hates Christmas. And that she's, you know, a Scrooge. Like I said before, you gotta feel bad for the kid. Well, while I said in the last review that he was annoying as a little kid. Oh yeah, there's no trace of him being annoying in this one. Because knowing that he's rebelling because of that torment inside of him. And when he finally talks to the when he finally talks to Carol about what's going on, basically the person that he was rebelling against. Oh yeah, that's mighty big of him. And he's easily the best character in the movie by far. And going off of that with Carol, she pretty much has a grudge against Christmas at first. It's kind of redundant that she ends up marrying Santa Claus. She's basically Charlie from the first movie mixed with with Laura in the first movie put together because she's so giddy. She says she just she, she just loves she just she just loves you know the, the gift that Scott gives her. It, it just reminds me of Charlie from the first one. It's just like oh thank you Scott thank you thank you and also kind of a Scrooge like Laura was in the first one. Which kind of ruins it. Her and Scott have better chemistry than Scott and Laura do. Which, obviously, because they're divorced, it kind of makes sense. But still. And with Curtis, the number two elf. It's Spencer Breslin. It's the same character he plays in every movie he's ever been in, ever. Seriously. I can't stand the guy. I don't know why, but I just can't stand him. I mean, if he added variety into his characters, I would like him a little more. But just like, ugh. Can't stand it. This might be a nitpick other than the Curtis character, which it's not really the character's fault, it's the actor. The whole Carol not believing Scott when he tells her that he's Santa Claus, when he pretty much proved to her that he's Santa Claus because of the amazing things that he did. Just, ugh. Are you freaking kidding me? It's so clear that he's Santa Claus. But, as I said, they have a nice wrap-up, and it doesn't last long. So, I can let it go. It's a little bit of a nitpick. For all, I think this is the best Christmas movie out of the trilogy. Because, it, unlike most Christmas sequels, well, unlike most sequels, where they just rely on callbacks to the first one, the callbacks in this one actually work because it works off of the first one and it's better than the first one. The character Lucy, while she's not really in the movie very much, she plays her role very, very well to where she doesn't need to be in the movie the whole time. She just doesn't because she does her, her role so perfectly. And overall, I just really love this movie, and I'm glad I got to review it. Every time I watch this movie, I just it just gets me in my feels, because I love Christmas, and I love this movie, and I love Tim Allen. So much so, I could have made a joke about his mugshot, but he's cleaned up now. He doesn't do drugs. I, I'm not sure if he drinks or not. 
But bottom line, he's a much better person now, and I'm glad that he's he was Santa Claus in these movies. Because I, I said it in the last review, I could not picture anyone else in this role, period. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if the jokes weren't funny, screw you. I love these jokes. I'll see y'all next week. Until then, stay positive and stay awesome, everyone. See ya.